So this is our part three of our SketchUp for Schools introductory uh, series of videos. And in this video, we're going to actually start drawing an object to scale just to get used to the drawing tools and how to control the scale and, and lengths of the objects that you're drawing. What we're trying to create here is a shape that looks like this. And this is an orthographic view that has a scale built onto it. You can see that there's one, two, three, four units, for instance, along this dimension. And this object is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units high. And uh, I'll share with you these dimensions as we go, but watch for this graphic that's been furnished to you and you can duplicate this for yourself. So here it goes. First thing to do is get rid of Dr. Templar Grandin by selecting him and deleting him. And now we're gonna start drawing always at the origin. The origin is where those three axes meet. And we're gonna start with the rectangle tool. We are going to draw a rectangle by clicking on the origin and just hovering outside here somewhere. We're not clicking again. And we're gonna to choose to make this thing 12 feet by 8 feet in dimension. And to do that, we simply start typing 12. And you'll notice in the dimensions box in the bottom right, you get the number 12. We want to make sure that they know that this is feet we're dealing with because the default in this case is inches. So if I put the foot symbol, we know that this is 12 feet, a comma, and then I'm going to type 8 and feet as well. And when I hit enter, it gives me a rectangle that is to scale that exact size. So there we go. The next step is to create some, some measurements, some dimensions, some guidelines so that we can start getting the rest of this to scale. And I'll keep referring back to this. What I want to do is I want to be able to cut a little notch out of this footprint that is going to be 3 by 8. And so this means I have to drag a guideline that helps me figure out where that will be. Well, the tape measure tool is our best tool for this. I'm going to click it once, select it. And when I start dragging this thing this direction, once again, I can start dragging anywhere, just go the direction I want, but I want to put one place there at about four feet. So I'll type four foot, hit enter, and it gives me a scale exactly where it should be. And I'll do the same thing over here for the heck of it. I'll drag something that's four feet. And if we looked at this with the orbit tool, we could see that this is perfectly cleaving this 12 foot dimension into three even sections. And next we want to drag one out that's three feet this direction. So I'm just going to use the tape measure and drag anywhere on the line to pull a guideline out and I'll type three feet and it'll snap it exactly where it should go. So to cut this section out now, what I'm going to do is just simply draw a line. Now I'm using the line tool. Clicking the line tool, I am going to click where the intersection meets and it snaps right where I want it to start. And this is the lovely thing about SketchUp is it infers certain things. It assumes that you want to be at a very precise intersection point where these guidelines meet or where the guidelines meet an edge. And having done that, I have just dr dragged this little notch that I'm going to erase out of here. And to erase it, so that I get rid of that little notch in the footprint, I'm going to choose to use the eraser tool. I'm going to start using the shortcuts, E for eraser. We'll take the eraser tool. And I think we mentioned before when you select, if you drag from right to left, it tends to be a little bit more powerful than left to right. So I'm going to wipe those things out just by gracing across them like that. And now I've got that first little notch, but I'm going to look a little more carefully and see what other notches I have to deal with. There's a little notch two by two in the back right corner of this thing. So I'm going to drag a couple more guidelines and you should too. So here's something that's going to go two feet. And notice that it knows which direction you're going, it knows where to put it. I'll drag one out here, two feet. And it says that this is now a perfect square notch, two foot by two foot. And when you see this, from an overhead perspective, you can see, yeah, this looks pretty square. Once again, line tool. And you can use that orbit tool just to make the job easier on yourself. Just keep rotating this thing around. Eraser tool, and I'll get rid of that notch. And I'm in pretty good shape to start drawing the rest of the shapes that we have here. Pretty good anyway. What I think I'll do is I'll, I'll keep on dragging some guidelines that are going to make things a little easier for me. Or I should say lines. I know, for instance, that there is... Oops. Hitting the escape key releases a tool, by the way. That's a handy thing to know. I'm going to have a little platform that is, looks like it's four by uh, five over here from that little notch. And I know what I've got here is eight feet all the way across, less three. So that would be the five feet. Everything has to add up. And I know I'm going to have a little line going across here. So I'll draw that fairly quickly. And now I'm going to start using the rest of the tools to turn this thing from a two-dimensional shape into a three-dimensional. That's the push-pull pull tool. This starts to turn things into three dimensions. By the way, P is the key that activates push-pull. 
And for the height of this thing, I know that when I count these grid marks up, it's going to be eight units high. So same way, I'm just going to start dragging it, let go, and type eight feet, and hit enter, and I get something exactly to scale. The next unit here, if I counted them up here, there's going to be six units of height for this thing. So I'll type six feet and hit enter. And for this final section, it looks like it's going to be three. Click to grab it, pull it up, and type three feet. And I've just about got this thing the way I want it to, but I can still clean it up just a little bit, and I'll show you some flaws that are in it. Now, if you ever lose the thing and it's going off the screen, we can snap it back onto the screen by clicking on the Orbit tool in the toolbar, but we're going to go down to a tool down here called Zoom Extents. By clicking it, it sort of recenters our camera so we can see things a little more easily. And one of the things I want to clean up are these little additional lines that were created when we started pulling these things. The Eraser tool will do a great job of that. The Eraser tool can be used on this and erase a line after the fact. And if we want to be very precise about it, we'll just zoom into the point where we can see these things. I know I don't want to have a line here either, so this looks a whole lot closer to the original model. And if I use the Orbit tool, I'm pressing down the wheel mouse whoops, to orbit around this thing. I can see there's some flaws on the back here too. Oh, by the way, here's another thing. Let's erase these guidelines after we're done with them. We can highlight across these things and get rid of them and simplify our graphic. So it's almost done. One more little trick. If we orbit underneath, I know these things sometimes come with flaws down here. And it's possible that you can see something that actually looks like it's hollow underneath. Now, I've just sort of intentionally distorted it and deleted that face. But sometimes you'll find you are missing a face entirely. And here's the secret to restoring a face. All you have to do is draw one line along the perimeter of the face, something nice and easy like this line here from here to here. And when you do, it infers and says, oh, I guess you want to have a complete surface there. And it restores it. So ladies and gentlemen, that's how you use this tool and you come up with this orthographic. Give it a try for yourself and good luck.